going on guys? Today we're going to talk about how to run your business. Many business owners don't run their business correctly. And this is one of the problems. There are many businesses that are literally running on fumes. If this is your first time here, this is Glendon Cameron, your corporate coach or financial coach, teaching you how to start businesses and make money. So with this conversation today, I got a question for you. If you started a business this year, when should you start paying yourself out of that business? Once again, if you started a business this year, when should you start paying yourself out of that business? Your answer is going to be very, very telling because one of the things I consistently see is the rise of these template businesses. And right now, a big one is the Amazon relay box truck business. And one of the biggest issues that I see in the current entrepreneur landscape is that people want to start a business and immediately be paid. Like I'm talking, they work Monday through Friday. They're looking for a check Friday. And this is the, the purview of hustles. You can start a service business and make money today. You can start a hustle and make money today, but starting a durable, long-term business model, it doesn't work that way. I'm about to say something that's going to sound really, really shocking. You should wait a year or two before you start paying yourself out of the business. Now, why is this? First of all, this gives the business, all of the business money to grow, but you got too many entrepreneurs who are literally biting off their cash flow. Like, like, give you an example. I ran some ads like last month and I came up with a lot of really good data and it cost me 5,000 bucks. I did not expect to see an immediate return. And you know, what I've dug was this big rabbit hole that really, uh, opened me up to redesigning my whole business, but I had a budget of $5,000 to test and there's still money in my personal accounts. There's still money in my corporate accounts because I'm going to start running ads again. Once I get that, um, course and stuff built out because that was the problem because I was getting people from the creative to the webinar and they weren't really interested in the landing page. But what I'm saying is most businesses are literally running on fumes. And this is one of the reasons that this pandemic was so devastating because essentially they were, you know, as long as I get paid this week, I'm good for next week, that type of activity. And I'm about to say something. Apple has like $200 billion sitting on cash. Tesla is sitting on 15 billion in cash. So one of the things that you got to understand, because right now in the, especially in the personal finance sector, savers or losers, you're, you're being taught not to sit on cash. You're taught to spend it, to invest it. And from a business standpoint, that doesn't necessarily work. Warren Buffett, I think was sitting on a hundred and something billion in cash. When you are in business, you need to have cash money in the bank. Uh, in the comments, I saw a really good comment in the business as the owner, you pay yourself last as an employee, you pay yourself first. And you're seeing that many employees are moving into the entrepreneur sector with an employee mindset, not a business mindset. Glossier is a makeup company. What this woman did, she created a blog into the gloss 
And she wrote that blog for not one year, not two years, not three years, but four years, getting customer data points. Then she went to a venture capitalist fund and came out with a million dollars. Do you understand this woman worked hard for about five or six years before she paid herself any money? And right now, you got so many people who claim to be investors, but they're not really, they're, they're, um, they're employees with an employee mindset toward business and investing. Like, hey man, I put $500 in there Monday. It's Monday, where my, where my returns, where my dividends? And one of the things like Facebook, here's a good example. Amazon.com did not make a profit for 14 years. Why? Jeff Bezos kept spending the company's cash. And Jeff Bezos, interestingly enough, worked on Wall Street. So he knew how to corporately structure his company where his board of directors and his investors couldn't tell him what to do. And Jeff Bezos stuck to his guns and built Amazon to be Amazon what we know today. Did not make a profit for 14 years. And Jeff Bezos did not get this big payday until after Amazon became Amazon what we know it to be today. And one of the things is an entrepreneur, as a long-term entrepreneur, as someone who wants to build something sustainable and something scalable, you're not going to be able to pay yourself immediately. You're gonna to have to leave that employee mindset and transition to a business owner's set. Cause this is one of the reasons I will never ever tell you to quit your job to start a business. And this is one of the things I'm starting to see with these YouTube ads, which I think are somewhat cancerous because the, this is the predicate of these YouTube ads that you can start doing this in your spare time, in your spare time. And you can start making 15, 20, 30, $40,000 a month. You don't have to change and the money's going to come quick. You know why these ads are designed like that? They're designed for your employee mindset. I work today. I get a check the end of the week. I get a check next week. That's what they're designed for because they know most people have an employee mindset. And that's why they're crafting these ads to sell their products to you from that premise of an employee mindset. So as an entrepreneur, when you're building your business, I know this is gonna sound really, really fantastical, but it may be two or three years before you can pull money out that company. I know that's like, depending on what you're doing. Now, one thing is different. You can start a service business and start making cash very quickly. And I already had some people, hey Glendon, you don't have no service business, but you keep talking about service businesses. Let me just say this. I'm trying to help you that ain't my program. I don't have to start a service business. I'm trying to help you because you don't know what you want to do to make some money. So for anyone who has this, leaves one of these comments, Hey Glenda, you keep talking about service business, but you don't have a service business. You will be deleted, mocked and blocked. But moving forward, a service business very much aligns with the employee mindset because you can make money. You do work today, you can make money today. But typically, you know, if it's like a car wash, that's something you can turn into a business. A lawn care service, that's something you can turn into a business. A cleaning service, that's something you can turn into a business. So there are many service businesses that you can turn into a long-term and durable um, business model. But the reality is that many business owners are still operating from an employee mindset and they don't have a strategy. They don't have the Jeff Bezos ethos of building this company 
and making this company the most valuable company that it could be, which means that as the business owner, you eat last. Once again, pay yourself first as an employee. I very much agree with that. But as a business owner, because one of the things, uh, we, we had a little dust up over at Savage Finance where this trick, because she's a trick, actually said that paying cash was risky. And all of the millionaires she knows finances cars and houses to protect cash, you know, to protect personal assets. And I'm just sitting here like, not, you know, then she actually said that she makes more money than I do. The millionaires that she knows, but she makes more money than I do. And then it got into, you can go over to the comment sections and you can see the, the dripping jealousy because essentially I'm going to tell you something. You know why I'm in the business I'm in? Because it has extremely high profit margins and cash flow. And this is by design. When I was listening to Earl Nightingale's Lead to Feel, what it did for me, I was like, one day I want to do that for people. I want to set up some system. I want to do the same thing. So I made that goal when I was in the boarding house to be doing this. And I have very high profit margins. I have extremely good cash flow. And this is why I'm in this business because I like it. It fits my personality. I have a media company. I have an education company. I have a YouTube company. The YouTube company slash the media company. And there's a lot of jealousy out here because I'm going to say it. A lot of you clowns don't have the talent to build not one, but two YouTube channels, develop a following, then to create courses and sell them and make money and maintain a very virtually no chargeback rate and very low refunds. See, that's called talent, which you don't have, which is why you're up there in the popcorn gallery throwing rocks at the screen and hating because you can't do this. Understand that many people want to create online courses, but let's kind of get into that. What was my first digital product? Making money A to Z with self storage and auctions. Where did I get that information? I ran a business for 10 decades, for 10 years. I actually did something. I actually did something. I didn't like, oh, I just want to create a course. I'm going to go over here and pull up on the Google machine and study how to do. No, I did this for real. Just like with the holding companies. I have a holding company, just like the YouTube super creative. That's what I do every day. So before you can teach, you must do and this is the problem that so many of you have. You want to, I spent 10 years in the storage auction business and I, I created a book putting on my years of experience in that book. And a lot of you want to create these online courses, but you ain't done shit in your life. I mean, it, it's laughable because this is one of the things, and this is something you know from me. When I don't know about some, I quickly say, I don't know about that. I don't know anything about affiliate marketing. I don't know anything about uh, Etsy. Things I don't know about, I don't talk about. Nor if someone, well, during the live stream, someone asked me something, I'm like, I don't know. You wanna know why I can do that? Because there's so many things I don't know, but there's so many things I do know. And the things I do know make me money. So I'm comfortable being radically transparent on what I don't know. If I don't know something, I'm going to tell you because that's how I operate. But one of the things, but back to the, the subject, because I got diverted by the trick alert. Um, one of the things that I want you to understand is so many business owners don't have proper books, don't have proper accounting, don't have proper financial co protocols, don't have the proper um, 
budgetary systems in place. Like I'm paying myself out of my company. And you know what? That money's just stacking up in my personal checking account. I'm probably going to maybe perhaps get in dividend stock. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. But um, next month, um, I mean, honestly, I may actually stop paying myself self a salary because next month there'll be about 150 up in there. I can easily live off that two years, maybe three years based upon my spending. So um, we, we gotta reevaluate that when we get there. Um, Cause see, once again, I have the power to change what I do. And this is one of the things I'm trying to teach you is it's all about creating options. It's all about creating additional options for yourself and living a good life. And if you keep your job, I'm never going to tell you to quit your job to start a business. I'm going to tell you to work hard while you have a job because uh, there was, I forget her name, but she was doing an interview. Blavity, she's the founder of Blavity. And her father, to his credit, made her keep a job. She wanted to quit her job and work on Blavity full time. And in the interview, she gave her father credit because she said, it's kind of a good thing he made me keep the job because that money we used. And I was like so glad to hear that because one of the things, and I'm gonna tell you a little story because I was doing some research on millionaires and the video is going to drop at probably today uh, Savage Finance talking about how most millionaires, there's 18.6 millionaires in the United States. And when you move it to 2 million, the number drops by almost 11 million. And when you move it to 3 million net worth, the number drops to 4 million. And when you move it to 10 million, 1.3 million people are millionaires. And when you move it to 50 million, 70,000 households, 70,000 households. So with the asset based millionaire, and uh, I'll go into it, most of them don't have no cash. Very, very telling because essentially what is happening and why people love, I call it the great American credit indoctrination system. Um, so many people don't know any other way to operate other than credit and financing stuff. I was reading on quorum and this guy said his aunt and uncle was billionaires and there was enough information in the quorum post to indicate this guy was lying because he said that his aunt and uncle were old. Here's the thing, old people, back in the day, Fred Trump wrote Donald Trump a $5 million check, which means he had five million cash in the bank. Old people did not finance stuff like this. So if he was telling the truth and he wasn't, they would have paid cash for their house because that's how old people got down who were from remnants of the Great Depression. They wouldn't have been financing all this other stuff. And then it was in there like they wanted to buy two Rolls Royces and their money managers told them no. And they went out and got two Bentleys. If you know the pricing, the price of a Bentley and a Rolls Royce until recent, like Rolls Royces started to be more expensive recently. But a few years ago, there was no price difference. There was no price difference. And I was just sitting there like, he was just making this stuff up as he goes because once again, this is what I'm talking about. I have knowledge. I know how old people got down. Uh, I'm thinking about going back to my old neighborhood and doing a video where all of these people who are old, who paid off their house, talked about that at Savage Finance, who were never a millionaire, got to retire. Think about that. Think about that. But. I'm all off track on this video. I don't really care. I don't really care. But essentially, we're going to get into how you should manage your business finances and stuff 
over at the art of holding we're going to get into all of that stuff we're going to get into that so the link is below for the art of holding i will talk to you guys in the next one